equal. All things considered, all things being equal, like Kitty Cat Cat on Sequitur and the Message for the People. An irrepressible little droid, Moxie, quick determination. A land of desolation, tip top secret information. An undisclosed location, a big ass battle station, a carbon copy of a screenplay, and fuck all imagination. The old Jedi mind trick, a tractor beam in space, a villain dressed in black, scary mask to hide his face. The Millennium Falcon, renowned throughout the galaxy as the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, makes yet another harrowing escape. A quirky dive bar, cranks and misfits, light speed, Han and Chewie save the day, like Derek Zoolander in space, a goddamn cinematic disgrace. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Blue Steel, Ferrari, Latif, it's the same fucking face! Fuck! Except, of course, that real sick scene where Kylo Ren stabs Han Solo in the heart, throws him off the bridge. Brilliant, if a little dark. Which brings us to the Star Wars component of the track. Star Wars, Episode 1, Star Wars. Like when you read a book and the first chapter is referred to as, appropriately, Chapter 1, i.e. that chapter which comes first, even if subsequent chapters flash back in chronological time. Star Wars, Episode 1, Star Wars. Once upon a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, a truly enormous Imperial Star Destroyer chases down a hopelessly outmatched and outmaneuvered Corellian Corvette on a diplomatic mission all their own. Laser beams, tractor beams, more laser beams, Imperial Stormtroopers storm the ship, still more laser beams, warning lights and various alert systems and signals, then stepping through the breach in a haze of smoke and devastation, only the evilest, scariest, meanest motherfucker in the known universe here forever to grace the silver screen, like some dystopian, futuristic, unflinching, unblinking, asthmatic, paranoid, android, space samurai motherfucker, all dude it up in like crazy alien S&M gear, most likely made of some sort of really like esoteric microfiber space fabric sourced from, for sure, from like totally renewable and sustainable sources like handcrafted and artisanal and no doubt made with love, Darth fucking Vader. A masterclass of the nexus of filmmaking and history, I mean science fiction, and as far as sequels go, Empire totally delivers. Aided and abetted, of course, by John Williams' brilliant cover, I mean mashup, of Chopin's Piano Sonata No. 2, and Gustav Holt's Mars, The Bringer of War. To say nothing of the mother of all spoilers, say it with me now, Luke, I'm your father. to the sequel later, deja vu all over again, Ecclesiastes, nothing new under the sun, and I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I do, art and commerce, art and commerce, art and commerce, albeit not necessarily in that order, but wherefore the sign and self and and film critics, of all the fucking useless professions, right down there with music critics and food critics, and paparazzi, and music critics. Why didn't anybody have the stones to call bullshit? A simple yet succinct, this sucks. It's the same fucking movie. Because I'll tell you, babe, it's a doggy dog world. But fear not, bitches, this pussy doesn't fuck around. Not only do I have the balls, but they're uncommonly big balls. Like huge, big, beautiful, planetary sized balls. I say balls the size of Uranus, but Jupiter's bigger than Uranus, and so are my fucking balls. So let's put on our classics and have a little dance, shall we? Citation, like Skinner, the streets, let's push things forward. You say that everything sounds the same, and it's true. Except, of course, for Madonna. From the new wave slash bubblegum pop fusion of her eponymous debut album, Madonna, including but not limited to such masterpieces as Holiday, Lucky Star, and Borderline, to those massive anthems of the house and electronica musical genres, Vogue and Ray of Light, respectively, to the more recent singular sensation that is Bitch on Madonna, and beyond. Madonna just continuously reinvents herself like some beautiful musical butterfly, winging it through the decades, much to the ongoing delight of her legions of loyal fans, 
and the ceaseless chagrin of her unrelenting petty critics, both here in the good old USA and around the world. With precious few exceptions, it seems like the Matrix is fresh out of ideas. Even the Matrix is out of ideas. Or in a video game, or in a video game, or in a video game. Just keep repeating the same old tired bullshit and hope nobody notices. Like Derek fucking Zoolander, Blue Steel, Ferrari, Matigra. It's the same fucking face! Which brings us to the basket of deplorable state of advertising today. From the industry that gave us such national treasures as the Oreo Cookie theme song, I just did it and I'm ready to do it again. And of course, who can ever forget, Mom, have you ever felt, well, not so fresh? We're now routinely subjected to an endless litany of lecturing, hectoring, posturing, virtue signaling, post-ironic, repetitious, gibberish bullshit. Now I don't like this song, mind you. And don't even get me started on the stupid fucking Super Bowl commercials, like that other master class in filmmaking, how to get ahead in advertising, vaguely, on a stepping stallion. If they want shit, I vaguely will give them shit. Medieval shit. Viking shit. A chorus line of Vikings in a car dealership. Selling cars, selling trucks, selling beer and phones. And the rags give zero fucks because they adore the dough from the ads. Everybody towing the line, playing it safe, lest anyone anywhere ever get offended. Like if I wanted to offend you, there wouldn't be any fucking misunderstanding, right? All actors played by real people, auto-tune must die, I've got this, you've got this, we have a situation, hack the mainframe, and my own personal favorite, good talk, good talk. Someone always telling us what to think and what to say, what to do and how to do it, how to be just like the cool kids. Well, I never had much use for the cool kids, and they certainly never had any for me. We're the little people in the TV, acting like fools for the whole world to see. Living our best lives, living the dream, it's just a little obscene, if you know what I mean. And like, what the foxtrot? How did we get here? Where did it all go wrong? To quote that freak of nature and literary force majeure, Hunter S. Thompson, with the right kind of eyes, you can almost see the high watermark, that place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. We're the little people in the TV, acting like fools for the whole world to see. Living our best lives, living the dream, it's just a little obscene if you know what I mean.